Welcome, I'm Ijeoma Onyato. Tonight, National Assembly agrees to hold joint session for the presentation of the 2019 appropriation bill by President Buhari tomorrow. Presidency says alleged threat by some lawmakers to boycott session is misplaced. Chief of Defence Staff seeks legislation for extra budgetary measures to address funding challenges of the nation's armed forces. President of the Nigerian Bar Association, Paul Usuru, arraigned before a federal high court in Lagos over alleged 1.4 billion naira fraud gets 250 million naira bail. And US President Donald Trump makes U-turn on threat to shut down government over disagreement with Democrats on funding of Mexico border wall. Central Bank's report shows increased credits to households and corporate entities within the fourth quarter of the year. On Sports News, Manchester United Football Club sacks manager Jose Mourinho after no progress with results or style despite spending nearly £400 million on 11 players. And from Abuja, INEC, political parties and other stakeholders commit to free, fair and credible elections in 2019, ask the police to address perception of being an agent of coercion. Tonight from the National Assembly, where lawmakers today agreed to receive President Muhammadu Buhari for the presentation of the 2019 Appropriation Bill. The lawmakers took the decision in separate motions in the two houses. President Buhari had written to the National Assembly last week, requesting to present the 2019 budget to a joint session of the Senate and House of Representatives on Wednesday, December the 19th, 2018, at 11 a.m. The lawmakers were able to hold plenary despite the ongoing strike by the National Assembly chapter of the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, which entered its second day. Our correspondent Terry Ikumi reports. It's day two of the four-day warning strike embarked upon by the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, National Assembly chapter. However, the strike in National Assembly workers met stiffer resistance from the police who have now closed the first gate of the National Assembly, allowing only journalists and non-members of PASAN. The whole situation is getting worse, and the leadership of National Assembly are making the whole issues worse now. By first and foremost asking the security to secure the environment of National Assembly against its own workforce. So some of our, uh, some of our chambers attendants are right inside there now, working for them as against their wishes. Inside the lobby, banks are closed. The electricity, which was cut off by the striking workers the previous day, has been restored. Lawmakers find their way into the chambers, despite the absence of the parliamentary workers. And amid scanty numbers, they hold plenary, slightly behind the usual schedule. Letter from the president. In the upper chamber, the Senate president puts forward a motion on the request of President Muhammad Buhari to present the 2018 appropriation bill to a joint session of the National Assembly. The Senate and the House of Representatives do sit in a joint session to receive an address by Mr. President, Commander in Chief, President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, on Wednesday, 19 December 2018, at 11 a.m on the 2019 Appropriation Bill, say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. I rule, I rule the leader, I rule the leader. In the House of Representatives, it is not as smooth when the same motion is read. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The successful sitting of both chambers of the National Assembly may have answered the question of whether or not the strike by the parliamentary workers will affect the president's budget presentation on Wednesday, the 19th of December, 2018. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. The secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, said it will be out of place for some lawmakers to boycott the presentation of the 2019 appropriation bill. Addressing the press after a late evening meeting with the caucus of the All Progressives Congress in the House of Representatives, Mr. Mustafa insisted that the meeting was just to discuss party matters. The Senate caucus also met this evening, but did not speak with journalists after the meeting. 
We're preparing for election. We have to come and dialogue and strategize and plan for the elections. Very, 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 no, no, no. Very soon we are going on recess. They are going on recess. And so we have to plan what they will do during the course of the recess in terms of deepening democracy and also preparing our party for the elections. Yes. Yes, sir. The CUPP told the opposition lawmakers to boycott tomorrow's presentation. What do you have to say about that cause? Well, I'm not aware of it, but it's, it's, it's also going to be totally out of place to buy court. Uh, this is a national responsibility. The president has to lay the budget as demanded by the constitution, and he is going to do exactly that. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has written another letter to the National Assembly accusing it of inflating the debts payable to states of the projects executed on behalf of the federal government. In the letter, which was read by the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, the President said the total amount approved by the Federal Executive Council was 487.84 billion naira for 25 states. But the National Assembly approved 488.7 billion naira for 21 states, a figure which is higher than that of the Federal Executive Council and excluded Kogi, Bauchi, Delta and Taraba states. The letter further stated that the process of approval by FEC was in accordance with the Public Procurement Act of 2007 and done to the satisfaction of the Bureau of Public Enterprises. The President is asking for a review of the conditions that led to the exclusion of four states and the details relating to the amounts approved by the National Assembly for the individual states involved. National Assembly did not approve any reimbursement for four states, Bauchi, Delta, Kogi, and Taraba, whereas Federal Executive Council had approved reimbursements for them. I note that the amounts approved by the National Assembly for reimbursement to 21 states I had an amount approved by the Federal Executive Council for reimbursement to 25 states. Since the BPP is charged with the responsibility of approving contract sums and there's a need for compliance with the Public Procurement Act 2007, I wish to request that you forward to us details relating to the amounts approved by the National Assembly for the 17 states in excess of what was satisfied by BPP for necessary certification and approval. Furthermore, I wish to request for review of the reimbursement earlier submitted in favor of Bauchi, Delta, Kogi, and Taraba states. Meanwhile, the federal government shall proceed with implementation on the following basis. One, where the amount approved by National Assembly is the same as the amount approved by the Federal Executive Council, the jointly approved amount will be reimbursed. Where the amount approved by the National Assembly is higher than the amount approved by the Federal Executive Council, the amount approved by FEC will be reimbursed. In the meantime, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Gabriel Olonishaki, is asking the National Assembly to introduce legislation that will address the funding challenge in the armed forces, particularly at a time when the presidency is reviewing the nation's security architecture. The call comes during a period of intense engagement of the armed forces in the Lake Chad Basin, just as other operations occupying various services continue in other parts of the country. General Onishakin received the Senate Committee on Defence during an operational review session at the Defence Headquarters in Abuja. Our correspondent, Ajuri Ingalale, reports. In war, a tragically thin line separates success and failure. Whether it is the dismantling of the armed herdsmen threat under Operation World Stroke in the North Central, or the deconstruction of illicit oil bunkering and militancy hotbeds under Operation Crocodile Smile in the South South, signs of progress abound in the security sector. But with the recent increase in debts of servicemen in the nation's northeastern theater of operation, officials assert that funding remains a major encumbrance. Burdened by multifarious security threats across multiple theaters of operation, defense officials assess internal budget performance. Citing an average project completion percentage of between 80% and 100% on projects funded by releases to defense headquarters, the defense chief says efficiency and prudence are now guiding principles. We have followed due process in implementing these projects some of which were completed in the year 2017. Budgetary provisions alone cannot adequately fund the requirements of the armed forces. Thus, 
Alternative funding options need to be given serious consideration. Upon review, the Senate Committee on Defense asserts that operational efficiency is yes. being maintained despite budget shortfalls. We are all aware that normal appropriation is not enough to sustain any military operations, especially the type that we have found ourselves in today. There is no doubt that the Defense Headquarters plays a enduring role in the coordination of the armed forces, which has effectively sustained troops in the various operations spread across the country. As the federal executive recapitalizes the Defense Industries Corporation of Nigeria, DICON, to develop indigenous arms and equipment to address local challenges, extra budgetary mechanisms are sought to hasten the defeat of menacing security threats. Ajuri Ingilali, reporting for Channels Television News. Amnesty International has been defending its 2018 report, where it accused the Nigerian government and the military of impunity and gross incompetence. According to its director in Nigeria, Osai Ojigo, the human rights group has always communicated its findings to relevant government agencies, including the army, before publishing, but such moves have always been re rebutted. But the army spokesman, Brigadier General Sani Usman, denies the allegation. They both spoke on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily. When we get our findings from the field, we communicate this to the authorities. We wrote to the Nigerian army. We shared with them, these were the findings we found on the ground. These were the allegations that were brought to our notice. What have you done about them? What is your own side of the story? But each time we've written, and it's not just limited to this particular report, they evade answering those questions. It's either they refuse to respond, or they refer us to other agencies like the um, Ministry of Justice, or they choose not to respond until um, smear campaigns like this. So it's important for them to, it's important for us to bring right on the table that at no point does Amnesty International, whether in Nigeria or elsewhere, publishes a report without giving an opportunity to the authorities to clarify situation on ground, to provide further information in order to clear some of the allegations that have been put forward. Amnesty is not destabilizing the country. Amnesty is interested in a country where human rights is respected, promoted, and where people enjoy their life. That statement is not correct because they have never, what we were looking forward to, and uh, way back in February 2016, the Nigerian army specifically wrote to Amnesty International to their London office, requesting them to come over, which they did. We sat down with them, we had a dialogue with them, but at the end of it all, they said our investigations were in, uh, kind of uh, not independent, that it should have been conducted by a, a foreign body or so to speak. But the truth is that they did not fault the content of that report. The then Provost Marshal, in the midst of uh, even the media, were there. But since then, they refused blatantly to cooperate with the Nigerian army. They only invite the Nigerian army whenever they have uh, finished their reports and they will just come uh, call you for Photoshop. And if you look at even the launch of uh, their latest report, they just invited the military. What we want, we have the right to know what they are up to in the sense that without prejudice to their independent and uh, investigative process, in the sense that we want a situation whereby the security forces were involved in the investigative process. If they ask case by case what has happened or what we are doing about it, definitely we will give them. We have established procedure in terms of disciplinary or relating with the public to the point that we have an established human right decks and we have been interfacing with other uh, you know stakeholders in part two after the break we revisit the ongoing industrial action by university lecturers and we have the ASU president professor Yodun Uguyemi to discuss the outcome of the latest talks with the federal government that's in a moment Stay with us.